Hello and welcome to another Yokogawa informational webinar. Today's webinar will be the YHC5150X and the CA700. During this presentation, uh, myself, Chris Coslow, Jeff Rainey, and Tay Cho will be discussing these products. The first product we're going to discuss is the YHC5150X, the Filmate Handheld Communicator. One thing I want to point out before we get started is the YHC works with all manufacturers' devices that have the HART protocol. So we definitely want you to use the Yokogawa products such as the flow meters and the transmitters and the other devices, but this works with every product, all the other manufacturers, their flow meters, their um, pressure transmitters, their temperature transmitters, if they have the HART protocol. Some features about the YHC5150X is that it reads the manufacturer's DDs in their native format without the need for translation. So what this means is if a new product comes out, the manufacturer will normally take the DD device and submit it to the Heart Foundation. The Heart Foundation releases on quarterly releases. Well, with, the, with this product, you can actually talk to the manufacturer and get the DD directly from them and with our software, you can take that DD and add it into the YHC so there's no waiting. You don't have to wait for the quarterly release. You can immediately use the product. That says also there's no need to pay subscription fees. That's true. Uh, the software that we provide is, is free, and you don't have to pay a three-year subscription fee uh, like you normally do with a competitor product. Uh, also, the display is a 4.3 uh, anti-glare touchscreen with color graphics. And the important part here is there's no stylus required. It has a capacitive display uh, that you can use your finger or a business card, and but there's no stylus required for it. Uh, it also comes with a full keyboard. Uh, so in the past, with other products, you've had to hit the shift button and then press like the number seven three times to make a, a, a letter. Now we have a full function keyboard that allows you to directly type in the tag information. Uh, we also are uh, HART compliant with HART 5, HART 6, and HART 7. Uh, we have certifications uh, from uh, Class 1, Div 1, um, the ATEX, Intrinsically Safe, uh, IEC. We also have many global approvals like uh, NIPSI, KOSHA, GOST, and other country requirements. Uh, for a full list, uh, just please check our website out, and we'll give you all that information later uh, to see all the global approvals we have. Uh, we have uh, on-demand help menus. Um, these allow the customer to set up their own shortcuts. So if you are doing multiple transmitters and you want to get to a certain section within the heart tree, uh, you can set up a shortcut and go directly to that, uh, that option. Uh, also, uh, we have a navigation button that lets you know where you are in the heart tree. So you don't have to hit the back, back, back button. You can always jump different places in the heart tree to uh, make commissioning device a lot quicker. We do have um, integrated multi-languages, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, just to let you know, if you didn't know what a DD was, it's a device description. So it's an electronic file that's uh, prepared by the manufacturer, uh, and this allows uh, the communication with a smart device and the communicator. So we'll get into a little bit of the uh, display. And these pictures here, if you look at the two bottom pictures, uh, they were taken up under the same light. Uh, the one on the right is a competitor product, and you can see the, uh, the glare of the light. And the one on the left is the YHC, and as you see, there's no uh, glare. In addition, the top two pictures show you the, the size difference of the YHC and how much more space there is uh, to allow you to see all the information. And here's an example of the 4.3 display that I talked about um, showing you the, uh, the dimensions and the space available. So we have a lot of questions about this. Can you use it in bright sunlight? How about cold weather? Because we know in the northern states, also in Canada, it gets, uh, gets cold. In Russia, it gets cold. Uh, here, there's no problem at all. Uh, like I said earlier, with the uh, capacitive display, you can use uh, gloves. So keep your hands warm, no problem, keep them on. Uh, the touch display works perfect. 
with the keyboard, um, in the past, um, other products had it where you had to, again, to hit the shift button and the number seven to get the letter R to appear. Uh, we have a full function keyboard uh, with the molded keycaps. So when you press it, you're actually filling uh, the button press instead of uh, having no contact. Uh, again, all the numbers are there and all the letters, which makes it easy to enter a tag number. Here's a little bit of more information about the keyboard. As you can see, there's the OK feature. You have the uh, navigation ring in the middle, and this is where your hand sits, so you can easily go up, down, left, right, and there's also the enter select button. Uh, we have a information help button. There's some configuration you're not 100% sure what it means, if you click the information button, it get, comes up and gives you a pop-up and gives you some information about what that selection is. Okay. We also at the bottom have a, a backlight button, and on the bottom left is the power button. And with the power button, if you'll hold the power button key down for five seconds, it powers the unit on or it powers the unit off. We also have a standby resume where if you press the button once, the screen will go off. So just like your cell phone that you have at the at the top of uh, like your iPhone on the right side if you press the button one time it cuts the screen off and helps the battery life however the phone is still on same thing with the YHC so we're going to take a little bit closer look at the uh, the display so the display areas in the top left you have the device that you're communicating with so in this instance is the YTA and the tag number we have is the area 17 the information in the black, this is where your SDC 625 information is. So this is the information that's being pulled directly from the product you're, you're talking to. And at the bottom, this is what I talked about earlier with the, uh, the tree, where it shows you exactly where you are in the heart tree. A lot of times, uh, some heart trees are, are very uh, deep and have a lot of different branches. Here you can see exactly where you are. So if you're in the basic set setup and I hit tag number next, if I want to get back to device setup, I just press the device setup on the screen and I jump back. I don't have to hit back, back, back to get there. On the right-hand side of the screen, and we'll go into a little bit more of these in more detail later, but these are your, uh, your navigation buttons, uh, shortcut keys, and again, at the top is uh, your battery level and your time. So looking a little bit more at the uh, the section that's the SDC 625 section. So this is everything that the heart DD has. So when the manufacturer creates the device, he writes the DD, and this is everything that is pulling from the product. Uh, the uh, the example of the low alarm. Uh, this is a simple one touch. Again, the the screen is uh, very sensitive. Um, you can touch it, get the information you need. The green arrows on the right-hand side of the screen for number three and number seven, these are uh, selections where the user has made the change. So this is sort of a confirmation that, hey, I've made the change, and then there's a, another button on the right that you're confirming the change. So if you're going through the heart menu tree and you're making a lot of changes, you at least know what you've changed before you commit. On the uh, low alarm level, as you can see, uh, the screen, I'm sorry, the alarm latching, you can see that the word sort of gets a little lighter. What this means is there's a lot more behind that. So th there's something else that says alarm latching. There's some other statement behind that. So you know if you click on it, there's more information there. And then in addition, the uh, high contrast for the low light situation. So we made it very bright, and there's uh, an option for you to select how bright you want the product. So you can do 20%, 40%, 6%, all the way up to 100% of the brightness that you need for the area that you're in. So these are the value added, and these were what I said we would talk about a little bit more. Um, in the upper left, uh, this button here is the uh, system settings. So if we want to get back to the different languages or we want to set uh, the time or, or do a recalibration on the touch screen. This is where we'd go here. The uh, create shortcuts, 
if you look at the bottom where it says basic setup, this is a shortcut that we went in and, and set up for us. So if we want to uh, connect to a transmitter or some device and we want to go straight to basic setup, then we'll just press this button. Um, a lot of times when you order transmitters, you order like 24, 50, 100 at a time, and you're going in there and they have the same setup, but you're just trying to change the tag number. So when you connect to the device, if you have a shortcut key with tag number, then right when you connect, you just hit the tag number and you don't have to worry about the heart tree or getting the menu out to see how to get down to the tag number. You just press the button and go straight to the tag number. And one other thing I'd like to add, Chris, is that uh, the, the shortcut buttons are only going to show up pertaining to the specific product that you're connected to. So you're not always going to have your screen full of these shortcut buttons, uh, only when they're available for that specific product will you see them. That's right. So an example is is if I have if I'm connected to a Yokogawa EJX pressure transmitter. So the setups, uh, the shortcut keys that I set up for that transmitter, are going to be only for when I hook to that transmitter. If I connect to a flow meter, when I connect to the flow meter, I'm not going to see all the shortcuts. And this is what Jeff was talking about. Um, the other Icons are the uh, display device status, so if there is an issue or an alarm, uh, you can press this button to get more information. We also have a, a hotkey. There's a lot of uh, DBs that require that uh, they, there be a hotkey for shortcut. And this, again, it, it's just a basic shortcut key, but in the DD, it looks for the hotkey button, and so we've added that. And then we have the configuration storage. You see the arrows going left and right. So this means that you're uploading a configuration or you're saving a configuration to the uh, YHC. Okay. Okay. So the status bar at the top. This is similar to a cell phone. And when this product was designed, we tried to make it as modern and user friendly as possible. Uh, everyone, pretty much in the world, has a, uh, a, a cell phone, and we tried to make it like using a, a cell phone to make it user friendly. So at the top you have your, your battery display and your status. Uh, you have the current time and you can set this um, either as a 24 hour period or a 12 hour clock. Uh, we have the heart communication icon. So when you're connecting to a device you'll see the heartbeat and it, It'll go on and off like it's a heart beating to let you know that it is communicating with the device. And then we have the PB, which is the primary or burst uh, trans transmitter indication. Looking at the touchscreen keyboards, uh, we have five different keyboards, and here's an example of one. And again, this gives you all the information uh, without having to hit the shift key. And it gives you the percentages, the plus and minuses, and we'll go on to the other keyboards where you have uh, the dollar signs, uh, some uh, Roman numerals, uh, you'll have uppercase and lowercase, so many different options for the keyboard. Looking at the system menu, uh, when you power up the product, it's going to come up and this is the home screen. So you'll have the system setup, the heart setup, and the system information. And the system information, this gives you the uh, revision that you're on, the serial number, and tells you about the product. Uh, and the heart setup, which we'll go to this screen now, um, it's going to let you know uh, what heart addresses that you're pulling to. Now, this, this screen right here is if you have more than one device, uh, in your heart loop. So let's say you have a, uh, this one has a temperature sensor, uh, number 103 that is connected. But if I wanted to speak to the, uh, on address 5, there's a, a 248R, or if I wanted to speak to the other product, then here's where I select devices. So you can talk to one product at a time, but this lets you know that there's three devices on the line and in the loop, and you can click on that device. We go back to the system setup menu, and here you have the date time setup, uh, the power, so you can adjust the backlight. Uh, 
if you're in a place with a lot of light and you want to reduce some battery time, then you'll just lower the display. Uh, here also you can select the languages, which we'll talk about that in just a second. And then there's the touchscreen calibration. So you can go in here and say, hey, I want to calibrate this to my touch. And when you go in, the operator can select the button and he does a quick, it's maybe a five second uh, setup and it allows him to set up the calibration. So the languages, there's many different language options in the YHC. And on a lot of the competitors' products, you can only select one language you, when you order the product. Uh, with the YHC, you can, it comes with every language. So if you have a uh, YHC in your facility and you have operators that speak different languages, uh, when they get the product, they can select their own language uh, that they're familiar with. And uh, then if another operator comes back on and wants to go back to English, they can go back to English. Uh, so all the information in the system menu would be in the language that you select. In addition, there's a quick start guide that comes with each unit. So in each unit, when you get the product, there will be um, a quick start guide in all the different languages to help the operator easily uh, start working with the unit. The YHC also comes with a charging cradle. Uh, this is where it powers itself and charges the battery and also where it communicates with the free software. As you can see on the right, here's the rear cradle and this is where the USB port goes in and the AC jack. As we told you earlier, this is a free software with no subscriptions. So there's no three years and you have to give us uh, another fee uh, for more updates of firmware or DDs. Uh, once you purchase a product, and then you're done. So all updates are free. Software, what this does is it manages the local library on your PC. And then you can select the communicator that you want to update. So here it's showing me on the left that I'm connected to uh, the FTWWVM5L communicator. And once I go in and I want to update the information, I can update it from the web, I can update it from a, a source if I wanted to, and I can delete configurations. But here, if you don't have a firewall set up in your system, then what the software does is when you start the software, so you start the FC manager, it's going to go out and look to see if there's any updates. If there's any DD updates or any firmware updates, it's going to come back and say, hey, there's updates available. Do you want to do this? And if so, you hit yes, and you can select from a web. Now, if you're in a facility that has a firewall or other securities, then we can also give you this information uh, from a CD source, and then you can upload your device there. Another function is saving configurations. So you have the configurations, you're out in the field with the YHC, you're uh, working with many different products. You come back, you can save those configurations to a, your PC to give you a record. You can also take those um, configurations that are on your PC and upload them to additional YHC units. So if you bought three units and you had one unit that had a lot of configurations on it, you could save those configurations to your PC you can take the two new units and transfer those configurations to your YHC. So you didn't really need to go and connect to those devices again. All the information is transferred to your device. We talked a little earlier about the single DD uh, when you get it from a communicator, uh, from a competitor, sorry. And if a new product comes out and you contact that manufacturer, they send you the DD, on the software, you can add a single DD, which helps you communicating with that product much quicker. So again, you don't have to wait for the three-month uh, heart release, and you don't have to worry about a lot of wasted time downloading a batch of DDs. You can do a single DD update. Here's an example of uploading configuration. So I've, I have this YHC. I uploaded the uh, configuration to my handheld, and now I want to restore configuration to the transmitter. So I can do an as-found or as-left 
a tight storage. The YHC also works with our FillMate software. Um, for users with the FillMate uh, software utility, uh, what the user does is they take the information on the YHC and it's connected to our FillMate data converter. And what this does is this allows you to see every configuration on your device. You can save this uh, configuration file to your PC as you can with the FC manager or you can save it into the FillMate software. Once you go into the FillMate software then you'll be able to see the configuration and you'll be able to go into the uh, DTM of that and see the information. So here it shows you the tag number, the long tag number, the uh, upper level, lower level, range level and it tells you all about the product so you can see each individual uh, item inside the configuration. All of this information is available on our website and this is yokogawa.com slash US. If you go on the yokogawa.com site uh, and you click on the field instruments under the device smart communication you'll be able to see all the information on the product, uh, all of our downloads, uh, all the different language is that we have there. You'll also be able to see a factory DD load, which you see on the bottom right here. So when we send a product out, it's completely loaded with the DDs that are available at the time we send the product out. Um, we keep this on here and we keep it updated so you know every DD that we've installed on the product so you can see the devices that it can communicate with. Now every DD that is registered with a heart foundation is preloaded on the unit. There's also some unregistered devices that we've received from many manufacturers that we've installed on the device. If we're missing a DD, uh, let us know and we can contact that manufacturer and get that DD added. But most of every D all the DDs that are registered with heart are on the device. Finish up with the uh, YHC. Uh, we're trying to make this product as easy as possible and user friendly. We know that there's many devices that operators have to communicate with daily and it's hard to remember every device. So we tried to make this device very easy and user friendly to operate. That's it with the YHC. Now we're going to move into the CA700. Thanks, Chris. This is uh, Tay Cho. I'm going to talk about the uh, CA700. So as far as the CA700, I'm going to do a, a product overview. We'll talk about some of the functionality of the unit itself. We'll talk about uh, how to navigate some of the uh, as found as left features and, and uh, files. And we'll talk a little bit about um, some of the accessories. And also uh, we'll talk about applications. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the CA700, the overview. The CA700 is a is a is a high accuracy, very easy to use pressure calibrator. It actually has a multifunction capability. So what that means is you're able to measure pressure, and also be able to source and measure current and voltage. So this has the the highest available accuracy in a portable unit. And we'll talk a little bit more about what makes it more accurate, and uh, what those specifications are. The unit itself comes in three different ranges: 200 kPa. 1,000 kPa and 3,500 kPa. The unit itself uh, is uh, capable of displaying over a, over a dozen different engineering units. And what I mean by that is you're able to display the pressure in kPa, PSI, inches of water, bar, millibar. So you have many different options to be able to display that information. So there, there is multiple USB ports that are used for uh, retrieving data and also to be able to uh, copy data to those uh, to an external memory stick. And the unit itself has an internal pressure module. So unlike some other units that are available on the market, uh, this has an internal module, so need, no need to buy external modules, and uh, we'll talk about the advantages of that as well. So we talked about the CA700 being the most accurate on the market, and um, basically, as far as the specification is concerned, the unit itself has a basic accuracy of 0.01% of reading. And this is a really an important point here because 
we are the only manufacturer that really lists the accuracy as a percentage of reading. Most manufacturers list it as a percentage of the span. So depending on the actual span, and we'll talk about this in the next slide, there's a tremendous difference when you talk about the accuracy over the, the entire span of the unit. The, the unit utilizes the Okagawa's uh, silicone resonance sensor, and this is a uh, technology that's been currently used in our pressure transmitters, and it's a, it's a proven uh, type of technology. It's uh, highly accurate and very stable over time, and it's been used in, in many, many harsh environments, so it's a, it's a very well very well performing and, and uh, long lasting type technology. So due to its superior accuracy, the CA700, when we talked about this with external modules, uh, that this you can do a lot with one module that you, that you would need multiple modules from another manufacturer for. So uh, in addition to that, it also provides a lot of uh, high range ability. You're able to resolve down to 0 .001 PSI. So here is a accuracy comparison. So the blue line that you see there, that is uh, what you will, you will find typically in most of uh, the competitive uh, pressure calibrators on the market today. That's typically about 0.025% of full scale. The scale here is 200 kPa, so roughly 29 PSI. And the red line that you see there, that's 0.01% of reading. That is what the accuracy is of the CA700. So and then there's a dotted line there that is a EJA, uh, EJX transmitter uh, for comparison purposes as well. So what you what you see here is at the full range of the of the uh, the span, which is 200 kPa, the accuracy between the CA700 and some of the other competitive devices is not that big. You can see that the lines are very small, but since ours is a percentage of reading, our line is going to be fairly linear from the from the span as you can see, whereas the blue line, as you get down to the lower pressure ranges, you have to add in that full error of the percentage of the span into the, uh, into the equation. So what that means is when you're measuring in the lower pressure ranges, you could be off potentially 20, 30, 40 percent in terms of what you're, what you're uh, measuring. So this is where we talked about the need or the ability to replace multiple modules in many applications to accurately measure and calibrate something in this range, you may think you may have a need to have two or three different pressure modules to be able to do that. Whereas with the CA700, that can be accomplished with one module and across the entire span. So the CA700, here is a front panel view of the unit itself, and we'll talk about the direct keys in a, in a slide or two later. But the function keys on the left, this is where you would, depending on, on what mode you're in, you can, you can change the display settings, you can change the units there. The terminals on top, that is where you would hook up your terminals to your device. You can measure, like I said, measure and source, uh, current and voltage. Uh, you will also have the ability to uh, to power a device via loop power as well. There's also a built-in uh, 250 ohm resistor that's that's there as well that can be turned on and off, and we'll talk about that later. Then there is a uh, backlight key that turns the backlight on for the display, the escape key to go back, and then the arrow keys and the energy key for navigating the different uh, menus. There's also uh, the bottom button on the right, that is the power on and off key. So when you do power it off, it will actually, actually it'll confirm that you want to turn it off. So here's a top view of the unit itself. On the left, you'll see the pressure input port. The, uh, in the middle, you have two USB ports. So here, this is where you can actually plug in a USB stick if you wanted to save it to there, to, to that stick itself. You also have the ability to have the unit itself look like a mass storage device. So as you record information, you can save it in the unit itself and then extract it that way. You also have the ability to control the unit via PC, and that is done through the MENA US port, port as well. And then right there is a, uh, another port for external pressure modules. So here are the direct keys. The, uh, the whole button is pretty self-explanatory. You can just hold that to, to, to lock in a measured display, that uh, measurement that you have on display. The min-max will, will 
record the min and maximum values. The relative key, this is something unique. This is, you can program a measured value and then also uh, press that button and be able to display the difference between the measured value and, and the preset value that you have uh, referenced there. The source and measure key, this is for the uh, electrical measurements. You can switch between sourcing and measuring. And the zero key, this is, zero is the, uh, the, the sensor within the unit. This is recommended before using the unit uh, for any types of calibration. And also, if you're going to change the orientation of the unit, move it from one different uh, orientation to another, it's a good idea to go ahead and zero that out. On the screen itself, here are some icons and some ex explanations in terms of what you have. The unit itself has a battery um, status indicator. The unit works off of six AA batteries. And it's just a bar graph that is there. You have the ability to do an auto off feature as well. You have the, some other um, icons there or hold. And, and you also have the ability, like I said, to turn on and off the 250 ohm resistor. The sweep modes, this is for the uh, electrical signal. So you can do step functions. You can do a RAM function. So that will allow you to do that. And, and that shows you there. And then we talked about the USB features in the previous slide in terms of being able to uh, control the unit through the, through the PC if you wanted to uh, make it appear as a storage device and also if you wanted to uh, plug in an external memory card as well. So when we get to the unit, this is the main screen that you would use to navigate the different functions for the CA700. The first screen is the measurement source. So this will provide an instantaneous uh, reading of pressure and also for milliamps, and that can be changed to different values. Uh, the calibrate uh, calibrate function, this is where you do your as found as left. The file feature, so this will this will give you an idea in terms of where all the files that you save are. You can go in there and you can delete files as well. The device settings, this is where you would change the um, the contrast, the auto off. This is where you can also turn on and off the 250 ohm resistance as well. So let's talk a little bit about the, the CA700 and some of the features embedded into the unit itself as far as the documentation part. The unit itself has embedded calibration procedures. And what I mean by that is you have the ability to save different calibration procedures there. So you can save a three-step, a five-step, seven-step, nine-step, a pressure switch calibration, you can save those and then what that does is that saves time so that you don't have to go ahead and recreate that every time you want to calibrate a field device. The unit has the ability to do as found, as left. You also have the ability to uh, enter in error data as far as a percentage. And all that information is saved as a CSV file, which is very easy to read. You don't need any expensive software for that. The, um, the unit itself, like I said, we, it comes with the USB and mini USB ports for retrieving that information. So we have a couple of screenshots here as well. The, the one on the left there, that, that is um, one that was for as found as left. And on the right, that will show the different uh, steps that's in the calibration and the percentage of error. So when we go to the uh, the first the first uh, calibration uh, part of it, the, the, uh, the primary measurement display, this is where you would be able to measure pressure and, and current as well at the same time. So this is kind of illustrating how easy it is to navigate the different menus. So you have the ability there to change the display settings from, from display setting one and display setting two. Once you, once you select display setting one, It'll pull up another menu, and then there you can actually change the function in terms of, uh, of what the, the, the measurement will be. The units, you have the ability to put averaging on and off. There's a scale that you can enter as well, along with alarms. And uh, this is also where you would change the units. So if you wanted to go from KPA to inches of water, the PSI, you can go ahead and do that here as well. The unit also has the ability to do a, a leak pressure test. So that'll, that'll monitor the, the amount of leakage over time. And uh, you can also save that information. So when we go into the calibration part of it, this is where you do your as found as left procedure. So when you see the model number, tag number, serial number, you can scroll up to there 
and actually input that information. So you can actually input the information from the manufacturer you're using, the tag number that's assigned to the device, and also the serial number to the device. And once you enter this information and you perform your testing, that information will be saved in the, in the CSV file. So this will help eliminate the need for any calibration sheets, uh, whereas you would have to physically enter the information in. It eliminates any human error that uh, goes into reading, interpreting numbers incorrectly, and you eliminate all those uh, paper sheets and have it all in electronic format. So on the left there as well, select procedure, that is where you would change the procedure. If you click on that button, you'll have a window that would come up with different test procedures, and that's where you would have your test procedures that you can choose from. So then you can do the as found, adjust, and as left, and uh, and then save that information. So as you go through it, so on the right, that screen there is what you'll end up doing is you will you'll the source pressure will will change, and you'll go from different points. And once you hit that set point, you'll go ahead and hit that set point button on, and then go up to the next point, and then go so forth. So once you do your calibration. That information is saved into a CSV file, and that CSV file is basically a text file, and this is what it, the, this would, would look like. We don't have any information there in the boxes, but this is just used for an example. So it'll give you the information as far as the, the, the source, the measurement, the units. It'll give you the mile number. Again, this goes back to the previous screen where we entered that information in, the tag number, the serial number. It'll also give you the calibration date and time, also the, uh, the serial number of the calibrator you used. So this will give you a lot of data there in terms of the different steps and the error percentage and whether or not it's a pass-fail. So again, the pass-fail will be a function of the error percentage that you set up. The unit itself is rated IP54, so that is dust-proof. It is also splash-proof, so it's very in, in industrialized and ruggedized for, for everyday use in the field. You also have a... a an ability to prop that up. There's a tilt bar in the back there that you can do use for that. As far as accessories, we have hand pumps available. We have uh, two pneumatic, one that's up, up to 100 PSI, another one is 600. And then we have a hydraulic pressure pump that's up to 10,000 PSI. These are also available in kits that will come with hoses and fittings and that sort of thing. As far as target markets for the CA700, it's, it's pretty wide-ranging uh, in terms of target markets. Power utilities, draft pressures, that's always a very difficult application since we're dealing in inches of water. You've got a variety of different transmitters, pressure temperature, along with pressure gauges. The service and calibration companies, since the CA700 is very easy to use and highly accurate, it's ideal for the service companies that are out doing calibrations. It's... Uh, um, it's very accurate, and, and because of that, they can use that to calibrate a lot of other pressure uh, calibrators that the companies that they're, use, that they're working with have as well. So in the oil and petrochem industry, uh, perch panel switches, those are very, very tough applications. Those are very small, uh, one to two inches of water switches that, uh, that, that typically customers have a hard time trying to calibrate. Uh, transmitters, again, and magnet helix gauges, those are very... Those are uh, down in the uh, low inches of water uh, gauges, so those are very difficult to calibrate as well. Steam plants. Those, those steam plants, uh, the CA700 is ideal because they're calibrating or wanting to check the transmitters that are used for in uh, revenue grade. Uh, that's, that's true in steam plants and also within educational facilities that also supply steam. They are monitoring the, the usage of different buildings and how much steam they're using. So those transmitters, they want to make sure that those are accurate and that they're building correctly to those different facilities within the universities. So I'm going to turn this over to Jeff Rainey. He's going to talk about the CA700 and, and some different application examples. Thanks, Tay. Uh, you're right. The CA700 is, is such a virtual uh, – excuse me – a versatile machine that uh, we actually see a lot of different applications. Um, one of the primary applications, of course, is field calibration of pressure transmitters and differential pressure transmitters. Uh, a lot of times in the field with the, the competitive products, there's just not quite the accuracy there to do a true field calibration. Uh, with the CA700, of course, at 0.01%, 
uh, instead of just doing a field verification, we are accurate enough to actually perform a full field calibration. So um, that's very critical for this product. Pressure switch test, uh, Tay mentioned earlier, this unit does have the capability to actually calculate the dead band error uh, on a pressure switch. So basically what we do is we pressurize the switch up to the upper limit. Once it reaches the upper limit, of course, the contactor is open. We take a resistance measurement and a pressure measurement simultaneously. We then bleed the switch back down to the low side. The contactors close, and we also take another resistance measurement and a pressure measurement, and then we give you the actual dead band of that switch. So this makes a lot of the, uh, the testing a whole lot easier, a whole lot faster and simpler. Also, for checking input and output adjustment of an electro-pneumatic converter, um, input and output adjustments can be done at zero full scale or zero, 25, 50, 75, as many points as you would like to. We can actually uh, take the actual pressure and the current measurements. Uh, a sink function. Uh, we can actually do a 20 milliamp simulate uh, on a, like a two-wire transmitter simulator. So. Um, having that sink function in there, uh, we can act as a load uh, in the in this the loop and carry out this function also. Uh, two wire transmitter loop check. We're going to we're going to supply the 24 volt DC power, uh, measure the milliamp signal measurement and the zero point check um, from a, a transmitter. We also want to keep in mind we also provide the 250 ohm resistance uh, that will uh, help you when you're connecting with a handheld communicator, whether it be heart or brain. Uh, we, we need that additional load in the loop, so the CA700 can provide it. And keep in mind, too, although this is, again, the most accurate pressure calibrator out there, because of the source and measure function, uh, it's almost like buying you know, two calibrators in one. You've got a voltage and a current calibrator and also a pressure calibrator. A lot of times you just need to be able to source a 4 to 20 milliamp signal, which in this application for calibrating a recorder input, uh, the CA700 is perfect. So here's a, a prime example for using, uh, we've discussed the YHC5150 today. We've also discussed the CA700. So here's a prime example of doing a, an analog output trim adjustment, for instance, on an EJA transmitter. So we would hook the CA700 up with a pressure pump to the EJA. We would also communicate via heart uh, with the 5150 and also providing the 250 ohm uh, load resistance uh, out of the CA700. So as you can see, a complete suite uh, of product going on, a lot of activity. So as you're thinking about Yokogawa and everything we've discussed today, just keep in mind, if, if you see this, this wide variety of, of offerings, just remember one thing. We work well under pressure. So at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Chris. Uh, if there are any questions, if you will post the questions uh, to, to the uh, site on the right, then we'll get those questions answered for you. And we appreciate you uh, to tuning in today. So here's Chris.